The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen. And we begin now with your 17 court watch. A homicide investigation has been launched following the death of an inmate at Kern Valley State Prison. The State Corrections Department says two inmates manufactured a weapon to stab and kill another inmate Saturday night. No staff or additional other inmates were hurt. Both suspects, identified as Juan Camacho and John Martinez, have been moved to restricted housing pending the investigation. The Kern County Coroner is still working to confirm the other inmates' official cause of death. And a person's dead this morning following a multi-vehicle crash on the grapevine. CHP says it happened yesterday around 11 a.m. after two motorcyclists collided into the back of a pickup truck. This was near Grapevine Road. The riders were in critical condition following the crash, but one later died. Lanes on southbound I-5 were closed for several hours during the investigation. The identity of the rider who died has not been released. And in your court watch this morning, the city of Bakersfield has rejected a claim filed by the family of a man who died over the summer during an encounter with police, paving the way for a new lawsuit. The family says Michael Marufo died as a result of excessive force on the part of officers. However, the coroner says he died of a drug overdose. Attorneys representing Marufo's family say there was wrongful conduct on the part of the officers who chased Marufo back in July after noticing he resembled the description of a shooting suspect. Attorneys say Marufo told police he had a bad heart, but an officer grabbed him as he climbed a fence and threw him to the ground where he hit his head. The coroner says 39-year-old Marufo went unresponsive while climbing the fence and died from acute methamphetamine toxicity, citing his cause of death as accidental. And to in court later today, the man known as the pillowcase rapist. Closing arguments are set to begin for 71-year-old Ronald Feldmeyer. He became known as the pillowcase rapist in the 1980s for using the covering to stifle his victim's screams. Feldmeyer spent more than three decades in prison and is now facing kidnapping charges in Bakersfield. He has admitted to picking up a woman back in June but denied holding her against her will, according to court documents. Last week, he testified that he was assaulted repeatedly during his time in prison and would never intentionally do anything that would send him back. Well, the swift currents of the Kern River proved to be too strong for a group of whitewater rafters in Lake Isabella over the weekend. Officials say nine rafters, including three kids, were stuck in the river near Highway 178 and Elizabeth Norris Road Saturday. Search and rescue crews sprang into action and helped get the group to safety. Sheriff's deputies say no one was hurt. Making news around the world, we are learning this morning that Americans are among the dead in the Hamas onslaught in Israel. And now the U.S. is sending military planes and ships closer to Israel in a show of support. NBC's Alice Bars on Capitol Hill with the latest. As the full scope of the deadliest attack on Israel in decades comes into focus. This is an attack that I don't think anyone saw coming. The tragedy compounded with news that at least four Americans have been killed. The Senate's top Democrats saying that toll will rise after lawmakers were briefed on the latest developments. Americans who managed to make it out of Israel describing scenes of horror. There were rockets above us all day. Israeli officials say at least 700 people have been killed in what they're describing as their nation's 9-11. Israeli airstrikes now hammering the Gaza Strip after the ruling Hamas militant group in Gaza attacked Israel on multiple fronts Saturday morning, raining rockets into Israel, while Hamas fighters infiltrated, in some cases by paraglider. A music festival in the Israeli desert, one of their first targets. 260 people were killed here, many more taken hostage. As the hostage crisis unfolds across the country, this Israeli father desperate to find his kidnapped wife and two young daughters. They are babies and my wife, uh, they are my only family. The Defense Department announcing the U.S. is sending military assets closer to Israel to deter any further attacks. While U.S. officials are not ruling out using the assets to help one of America's closest allies in its fight against Hamas. 
There are growing questions about Iran's potential role in this attack. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said he had not yet seen evidence that Iran directed the violence, but that Iran and Hamas have had a long relationship. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Here locally, Temple Beth El is holding a vigil to pay respects to the victims in Israel. It's happening tomorrow night in Northeast Bakersfield on Loma Linda Drive starting at 7 p.m. Well, have you noticed it yet? Insurance rates are skyrocketing across the country. And for Californians, some insurance companies are not even signing on new policies altogether. 17's Aliyah Fitzgerald joins us with the story. Aliyah? That's right. Excuse me. That's right. In May, it was national news that State Farm would no longer issue Californians new policies on their home insurance. However, not only, they're not the only ones leaving behind the state. Last year, Geico Insurance closed down all of its California-based offices. They have also stopped the sales of policies over the phone. Progressive has pulled back on advertising in the state. Allstate Insurance stopped accepting new home insurance policies last year. And State Farm is no longer taking new policies on home insurance. This has sparked a fear. What happens when other companies start to do the same thing? If your insurance policies are due to renew and it's more expensive, it may be time to consider your options. Usually people will shop around for the best price policy when they first buy a house or first buy a car, rent an apartment. The reality is though, prices will go up over time. They give you a really good offer to hook you in and then maybe those prices slowly increase. Maybe there's a big jump. And a lot of people don't realize that they can leave at any time and that they could potentially score a better deal with a competitor. Using insurance comparing search engines like the Zebra or Policy Genius could potentially save you hundreds of dollars every year because even if your price hasn't gone up, there still could be a cheaper option out there, and any bit of savings these days really helps. If you still can't find a proper insurance policy for your home, the California Fair Plan will provide basic fire insurance coverage for high-risk properties as what they call a temporary safety net. Now, 17 News reached out to State Farm for comment on recently pulling out of the home insurance rates this year, but they have not reached back as of news time. In studio, Aaliyah Fitzgerald, 17 News. Making news around the state and uh, psychedelics will remain illegal in California, at least for now. Governor Gavin Newsom vetoed a bill that would have decriminalized possession of certain hallucinogenic drugs like magic mushrooms. Newsom says he believes in the underlying science of hallucinogens and their effectiveness in treating mental illness like depression and PTSD. The governor even called the drugs an exciting frontier, but he claims the existing bill lacked the detail needed to implement decriminalization. Negotiations are set to resume in an effort to end the actor's strike in Hollywood. Performers are demanding streaming residuals and better working conditions, along with safeguards against AI exploitation. Both SAG-AFTRA and the Producers Union are expected to meet today, which could signal an approaching end to the three-month standoff. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nextstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.